In classical physics, a particle is a particle characterized by a fixed velocity and seems to be a very simple problem. However, in quantum world, a free particle behaves based on the Schrodinger equation in which the potential is zero. To solve the Schrodinger equation for the free particle, we use the separation of variables method and use the new psi in the Schrodinger equation. It is equal to a constant value which we call E. Solving the time-dependent part yields phi of t. And for the time-independent part, we have this solution for psi of x. Pay attention that E is positive and the energy can carry any positive value because there are no boundary conditions to restrict K and E. Let's rewrite E as K squared H bar squared over 2M. Now let's add the time dependence and write the wave function at X at time T. This kind of function can be represented as a spiraling wave at time t. Let's choose a fixed point on this spiral. The first term in our wave function is a wave moving in positive direction with the speed of h bar k over 2m. And the second term is a wave moving in opposite direction with the same speed. So the wave function can be written as this expression, in which k can be positive or negative. If k is positive, the wave is traveling to the right, and if k is negative, it is traveling to the left. The wavelength is equal to 2 pi over the wave number, and the Dubroy formula says that the momentum is equal to the Planck's constant over the wavelength. So we can write the momentum based on the wave number. The speed of these waves can be calculated by dividing the coefficient of t by the coefficient of x. And as we know, the speed of a classical particle can be calculated by this expression. So, it seems that the quantum mechanical wave function travels at half the speed of the particle it is supposed to represent. There is another problem with this wave function, and it is the fact that it is not normalizable, meaning that a free particle cannot exist in a stationary state with a definite energy. In previous examples, we used the time-independent Schrodinger equation to find the stationary states and by discrete summation over n we found an expression for psi of x and t for which we had to find cn's. But for this problem, we couldn't find stationary states which are normalizable. So we used another method in which we used an integral over different k's instead of summing over different n's. And instead of finding cn's, we have to find phi of k. Now, this wave function is normalizable. Writing the wave function in this format, which is a wave packet, carrying a range of k's and therefore a range of energies and speeds, gives us the power to deal with the free particle. We are usually given the wave function at time zero, and we are asked to find it at time t. Suppose that we have the wave function at time zero. How can we find phi of k? The answer is Fourier analysis. f of x can be written as an integral of f of k multiplied by e to the power of i k x over all k's. And f of k can be written as an integral of f of x multiplied by e to the power of minus i k x over all x's. f of k is called the Fourier transform of f of x. And f of x is the inverse Fourier transform of f of k. So we can find phi of k by calculating this integral. Now that the normalization problem is solved, let's see how we can deal with this paradox. The wave packet represented by this integral is a superposition of sinusoidal functions which are contained in an envelope. What corresponds to the speed of the particle is not the speed of these small waves which is the phase velocity but the speed of the envelope called the group velocity, which can be equal, smaller, or greater than the phase velocity. So the speed of the particle is equal to the group velocity. And we have handled this paradox too. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.